today we're going to look at the Battle of the Standard, which is part of the Anarchy, which is one of the most underappreciated parts of English history. It's got everything you could want, people arguing over who should be on the throne, battles, an angry woman. It's great. So let me take you back to 1120, when Henry I is on the throne, because he's in a spot of bother. His son and heir William has just drowned in a shipwreck in the English Channel, so the only heir he has left is his daughter Matilda. So he makes all his barons swear an oath of allegiance to her, that they'll support her when she becomes queen but there's a slight problem a lot of people just don't like her they don't like her husband Joffrey of Anjou and they don't like her because apparently she's a bit of a bitch so when Henry the first dies in 1135 instead of Matilda becoming queen the throne passes to her cousin Stephen of Blois from France now she's not having any of this so she wants to get her throne back and that's where the story starts one of the first people to swear allegiance to Matilda was Henry I's brother-in-law, King David I of Scotland. So when Stephen took the throne, and Matilda didn't, he got an army and he invaded England because he wanted to put Matilda on the throne and he wanted to get land for himself. When David invaded England in 1138, he did what every other medieval army did. Looted, pillaged, even took slaves. But it so shocked Stephen and the English that they were spurred into action and in fact the story surrounding the 1138 invasion would be remembered hundreds of years later to rally the English armies when they were fighting the Scots in their wars of independence. The King's Lieutenant, Archbishop Thurston of York, preached and exhorted the people of the North to stand up to David's advancing army and block his advance to York. Thurston wasn't present at the battle but instead erected a tall mast on a car laden with holy water and banners of the main religious centres of the North. Durham, York, Beverley and Ripon. This would become the standard of the army, hence the name, the Battle of the Standard. This would be the first and only time that banners of saints and minsters were used in an English battle. We can't be sure of what happened in the battle, but we do have a rough idea. At Scott Pitts Lane, a large mass grave was found, so we know that the majority of the action took place there, as in medieval times, you were buried where you fell. The rest of the battle comes from an account written by the monk Aylred of Review Abbey. The modern battlefield bears little resemblance to the original, and so unfortunately we must use our imagination, but on these green fields was another bloody Yorkshire battle. The English straddled the Great North Road with around 10,000 men. The Scots had a larger army of around 15,000. It was foggy on the morning of the battle, so visibility was severely limited. Heavily armoured knights on foot made up the first rank, along with archers and other ordinary soldiers. David's army had a large number of Galwegian levies at the front, described almost as barbarians by the medieval chroniclers, with his son Prince Henry's archers and knights behind them. The battle began with a charge by the Galwegians, but their lack of armour meant that they were easy pickings for the English archers and knights. Aylred describes it as like a hedgehog with its quill, so would you see a Galwegian bristling all around with arrows and nonetheless brandishing his sword and in blind madness rushing forward, now smite a foe, now lash the air with useless stroke. The Galwegians retreated, spreading significant chaos and disorder into the ranks. Prince Henry charged with his cavalry and broke through the English line. This could have been disastrous for the English, but Henry had no support and so the English were able to quickly recover and beat him back. By the time he got back to his own lines, the full Scottish army were in retreat and running back across the Pennines. The English casualties were reportedly very light, whereas the Scottish lost a tremendous amount of soldiers. After the battle, King David signed a treaty with Stephen, which granted him land in Northumbria and Cumbria in exchange for not taking up any more of Matilda's cause. Historians have generally regarded this battle as not having a huge influence on the general outcome of the anarchy, but there's still no excuse because it is a very fascinating battle indeed. This has been Yorkshire's Hidden History. Hope you've enjoyed and see you next time.